What's up guys, it's Ben Cooper here from Waggle Teaching and I'm going to do a quick video today to support you NQTs out there and you student teachers on when you're taking on a new teaching role, whether it be an official paid role or a student placement, on how to make sure that you have a really successful time in the classroom. <laughs> We know it's stressful, we know you've got lots of extra work to do, so I want to make sure that you make the most of that time and that the whole experience is really, really positive. So here are my five top tips for your NQTs and student teachers on how you can have a really great student placement or start your first job really, really strongly. So the first one is all about feedback. As an NQT or a student teacher, you're constantly being quality assured, you're constantly giving feedback, and you're constantly being told the things that you might not be doing as well as you could have done. Lots of next steps. What's really important is you take that feedback in a really positive way. It's really easy when you're being told lots of things that you need to do better to get your back up or not take on that feedback or to make up excuses. However, as a student teacher and as an NQT, it's really important that you take on that feedback really positively. Make the notes of what you need to do and make sure you do your best to try and implement them. The best way to take on feedback is to actively seek it out rather than wait for that feedback to come. If you actively seek out feedback feedback and invite people into your classroom, invite colleagues to come and watch your lessons, then actually it becomes much more of a positive experience both for you and for the person who's monitoring your performance. If you're asking for them to look for things that you can do better, then actually that relationship will develop and build and you're actively seeking out feedback. Ultimately, for your own well-being, it's going to feel much better than constantly waiting to be told that you're not doing something right, rather than seeking someone to come and tell you what you can do better. Following that, make sure you also ask for help and support. If you really don't understand something, ask a question, ask for help, and ask someone to show you how to do it. If you're really not sure of how to improve on something, ask for someone to come in and show you how to do it, or go and watch someone else do it themselves. Also, teaching is full of lots of jargon words. I don't know how many times when I was an NQT, people are caught talking about PPA, NQT, all these different abbreviations, and it, sometimes I didn't actually know what they were. Go and ask a question. Do not be afraid of not knowing something. It's really important that you ask questions, otherwise you're gonna spend your year feeling anxious and trying to hide away from things that you don't know about. Make sure you go and ask for things that you are not sure about. It's also gonna show that you're, again, seeking help, seeking support, and it's ultimately gonna put you in a more positive light. And if someone else makes fun that you don't know something, ignore them. The other one, which is really difficult, is don't take on too much. Of course, as an NQT or a student teacher, you want to show your positive attitude, you want to get involved in, in as much as possible. And I'm not saying don't get involved in lots of different things, it's really important to do that for your own experience, but don't take on too much. If someone asks you to do something and you really feel that you can't or don't have the time to do it, then explain why you think that it's not a good idea and why you think you're gonna to struggle to meet their demands. And explain all the other things that you've got to do. Honesty is ultimately the best way. Rather than accepting something, doing it, getting stressed about it, and perhaps not completing it in the way that they've expected you to do it, or doing it as well as you think you could have. So try not to take on too much. The fourth one, again, is about your own well-being. It's give some time to yourself particularly at the weekend. It's all too easy as an NQT or a student teacher to spend your weekends planning, preparing, creating amazing resources. It's always important to block out time for yourself, to spend time with your friends and family and let your hair down a bit as well. So make sure that you purposely block out time during the weekends and in the evenings during the week of when you're not going to do it in work. A stressed teacher is not an effective teacher in the classroom. And the final one to support with that is organisation. Make sure you block out time of when you're going to mark those books and when you're going to complete your planning and give yourself time limits. It's really easy on a Sunday to sit down and say, right, I'm going to plan my lessons, but not give yourself a length of time to finish it in. And more often than not, you tend to find yourself getting distracted by things on the internet and not being as focused as you could have. However, if you give yourself an hour to get a job done, you're more likely to be focused for that hour, be much more concise in your planning, get it done, and then you've got the rest of the afternoon to yourself. 
make sure you block out slots of when you're going to complete things because that will make sure that you complete them within that slot rather than procrastinating and wasting time. So those are my five top tips for NQT and student teachers in their new jobs or their new school placements. I hope it's helpful and I hope you have a really successful time with your new class and your new children. It's a great experience that you can learn a lot from, but it's always important to approach it in the right way. And hopefully my five top tips have helped you do that. I'm Ben Cooper from Wego Teaching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more teaching ideas. Have a really great day. Oh,